opulent, grandeur, secret passageways that lead from kitten rooms all the way to pits of despair. That is what Between Two Castles has always been about, and it helps that it's a damn good tile placement game too, which honestly I think is better than either of its respective parents. And now we have Secrets and Soirees, an expansion that includes a whole bunch of new doodads to add to your castly goodness and blessedly introduces new solo modes. So let's take a look. First and foremost, this expansion introduces some new hardware to the mix, most important of which are the two new basic room types in the box. Secret rooms become doppelgangers of the room they're pointing to, copying the room type, scoring effect, and even the special little torchy, swordy, wall-hanging symbol, making for some really interesting and creative plays, not least of which is that they can be used to make copies of copies of copies, or for obtaining third and fifth room bonuses for the room type they become. Activity rooms, on the other hand, score points for all tiles adjacent unless a specific type of room is anywhere surrounding it, rendering the activity room to just one point. After all, it's just cruel to put a food room right next to a climbing room. How are you going to get your workout done? And of course, the activity rooms have to come with a bonus for getting three, so the game introduces ballrooms, a special room type that scores points for specific room types in neighboring castles, which can lead to some tricky opportunities in a drafting game, especially Especially when you have a hand in building one of those neighboring castles. These new rooms are just another layer on the cake that is this game. New puzzles and possibilities that also make for some great whimsical thematic connotations as you explain how visitors navigate your precious little castle. That said, shuffling in a whopping 61 tiles into the existing set is no joke. Extravagance and being super extra does come at a certain cost. And yeah, that's 61 new tiles, because on top of the secret rooms and activity rooms, there are supplemental rooms of the original type that key off the new rooms, the utility bonus cards, and a throne room, and even another castle allowing play for up to 8 players. Fortunately, to house it all, the expansion totes another beautiful insert, which fits magically in the original box, ensuring everything is safe and snug. But hardware isn't enough. This expansion includes a new multiplayer variant and two solo modes. The multiplayer variant allows you to skip, well, more or less the, exactly the thing that makes this game so unique in the first place, participating in the building of two neighboring castle tiles. Nope, in this you are in charge of one and only one castle, but the hitch is you still pick two tiles at a time, putting one in your castle and inflicting the other upon your neighbor. For the most part, I'm not the biggest fan. I love the tension and collaboration of this game as originally designed, but I think this mode is great for two-player as an alternative to the dummy castle, making this a bit more of a head-to-head -head duel. And in the end, more options, more better. But Solo, Solo is great. Yes, it's a table hog. Yes, it's pretty cerebral, but it does facilitate the best parts of the game while changing up your thought process quite a bit. In the basic and my favorite of the Solo variants, you build a castle with two automated opponents drafting out of a face-up hand of tiles. On each of their turns, you signal to the Automa what you think would be best of the remaining tiles for your shared castle, then flip the priority card which will evaluate which of those tiles they'll take to the Automa's shared castle and which of the signal tiles you'll get to place. Then on your turn, you just draft one for each of your shared castles, eventually working your way through the numerous hands. The Automa's shared castle is scored uniquely based purely on room types and amounts of acquisition numbers, and you score your shared castles as normal. It's challenging, smart as a whip, plays in under an hour, and the design shows creativity and cleverness of all involved. The also quite good but simpler and more rudimentary introvert variant mode has you managing one castle against an automated opponent, which similarly prioritizes acquisitions out of a smaller hand of tiles. Really, it just becomes a basic two-player drafting game of who can build the better thing, which is fun and puzzly, but I prefer the elaborate and closer to the spirit of the original multiplayer game, Basic Solo Variant. So to put it simply, Secrets and Soirees is one of my favorite expansions to come from Stonemaier in a while. It adds more of the best parts of an under-recognized game in their catalog, and it also introduces a bunch of new ways to play, even extending the player count all the way from solo to a big fat whopping eight players. And yes, 
it's a lot of tiles. And no, it's not like the base game was exactly lacking for content, except for a solo mode, in which case this is a pretty big deal. But it capitalizes on the puzzly and thematic aspects that make the game so fun and serves them up in a way that feels right at home in the base game box. So I'm betting that if you like Between Two Castles and Mad King Ludwig, there's no way you're not going to like Secrets and Soirees. And that's our review. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcast, and video here on our channel and website CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.